um, welcome to Anjan GCP Data Engineering. So in this video, we are going to see what is data lineage and uh, why we need it and uh, how we are going to track data lineage for BigQuery tables. Okay, first of all, what is data lineage? Okay, data lineage is a feature or it is a concept. It will help us to track the data, how it is moving through uh, different systems and uh, where it is coming from and where it is going to okay and uh, here i'll give you an example okay for example let's say there is a table one and table two maybe these two tables are coming from different systems and uh, as part of a business requirement we'll have to create one more table called table three so we may have to create this table within the same system or we may have to create this table in a different system okay for example let's say this is coming from two different uh, uh, so system and we will have to create this table 3 in a data warehouse okay native data warehouse within the google cloud platform let's say it's a big query in our case okay and then we'll also perform some aggregation on top of table 3 okay and we'll create called table 4 okay now you can see how this data is moving through different uh, processes or different systems okay for example if you assume that this is a system 1 and this is a system 2 uh, now table 1 and table 2 is coming from system 1 and you have joined the two tables and then you have created table 3 in a system 2 and we have we have performed an aggregation and then we are creating table 4 in system 2 okay so this is basically a uh, data flow through different systems okay and then why we need uh, data lineage okay so usually in um, most of the scenarios as a data engineer we deal with large data sets right we'll extract the data from different sources and we'll perform etl and elt and we'll have to transform the data as per a business requirement okay and then we'll make the data ready for different purposes like reporting and dashboard and also we'll make the data ready for machine learning this will be further consumed by different stakeholders within the system okay and for example, let's say the data consumers, maybe business users, wanted to know if the data is coming from authoritative source. They would like to know the actual source of the data. How do they know? Okay, for example, let's take the same example. Say they know the table four is exist in the system. They don't know the prior transformation performed and how this table got created. If they would like to know the source data of table four, how do they know? Okay, they should have some mechanism to uh, basically track the lineage of the data okay in case of data engineers uh, they face many issues in identifying the root cause uh, due to lack of reliable ways uh, to track the data transformations uh, and also impact analysis before if they have to modify or delete any table in case of data governance so in case of data governance uh, basically uh, if there is a sensitive data flowing through uh, different systems right if you have to restrict the data and uh, we have to know the actual form of the data from where it is coming in such case also this particular uh, feature called data lineage will help us okay for all such problems data lineage is a one pant solution okay and uh, right now this uh, inbuilt feature is available through data plex and data catalog services okay and uh, right now it is integrated to different uh, google cloud data stack services like bigquery and uh, data proc okay we're going to discuss that in next slide okay so now coming to the im roles uh, required basically to uh, check the data lineage for uh, bigquery tables okay or uh, any other services right and uh, the basic role we should have is data catalog viewer role okay within that project and also data lineage viewer role okay in case if you have to track the lineage for bigquery obviously we need to have a BigQuery data viewer role, okay? As I already said, uh, this is already integrated with uh, these uh, Google Cloud services, Data Fusion, Cloud Composure, Data Proc, and Vertex AI. So, but in this demo, we are going to see an example for Data Proc and BigQuery tables, okay? In our demo, we already created these two simple tables uh, in one of my BigQuery data set, customer and items, and uh, uh, by using sql itself we are going to create one more table called sales okay uh, it is a combination of basically it's a transaction table a fact table which we are going to create out of customer and items then we are going to perform an aggregation on top of the sales and then we are going to create two more 
tables okay so in the demo we, we are going to see this particular example in detail okay in our demo basically we are going to create this item table using data proc process so this customer table directly we are uploading data into bigquery uh, uh, table and then uh, we are basically creating sales and uh, two sets of aggregate uh, aggregate layer tables using sequels okay now let's get into the demo in the first part of the demo we are going to create a dimension table called item so we are creating this table using uh, uh, data proc uh, PySpark job. So for that we need to create a data proc cluster for that I am using uh, CLA commands. So the first section of the commands uh, I am using these commands to create the data proc cluster and the second section we are using those commands to execute that particular PySpark job in on uh, created data proc cluster. Okay, so if you examine the, uh, the commands which we are using to create data proc cluster if you see this particular property uh, which we are using to enable the data proc uh, lineage on top of data proc cluster okay so uh, there are other commands which we are using to create a bigquery connector on top of data proc cluster okay and the rest of the uh, properties are pretty much simple now we are going to use uh, this group of commands to create the data proc cluster uh, we are going to execute these commands uh, in cloud shell environment okay so now execute it so authorize now it's going to create uh, the named uh, data proc cluster okay it will take some time it usually takes three to four minutes so we'll have to wait until that time while that data proc cluster is getting created let's examine our PySpark script uh, which is basically reading data from gcs bucket and uh, writing the same data into the query table if you examine this uh, simple script, it is reading data from this particular GCS packet and there is a CSV file called item.csv coming from that GCS packet. And uh, we are going to create uh, this particular BigQuery table. If this table is not already, I mean, this table is not exist already in the BigQuery, then it will create the table. Okay. So now let's examine uh, this particular file within the Google Cloud storage packet. Okay. So let's go to the gcs bucket environment so this is the gcs bucket and if you examine there is a csv file called item.csv okay so this which we are reading into by spark uh, pipeline or uh, script okay so we are directly writing the data into bigquery table okay i hope this is clear now this data proc cluster has been created now you can examine it is active and uh, this is in running state now go back to the other CLA command uh, which we will use it for uh, basically to submit PySpark job uh, onto created data proc cluster okay okay this script is already available in the cloud shell uh, local folder okay and we are going to examine that if it is already available so now this is already available so we are going to execute this uh, within the cloud shell environment uh, so that this job will be get submitted uh, into data proc cluster okay before we submit this job so let's examine the table bigquery table so this is the bigquery table so let's also verify if this table is already uh, exist in the bigquery environment or not so now coming to the bigquery environment and now expanding the data set i don't see any table okay so now it's time to execute our uh, PySpark job i've submitted the PySpark job it will take some time to get executed now it is getting executed now you can see the logs okay so go back to your uh, data proc cluster environment and jobs interface so there you can see this job is basically getting submitted it will take some time now you can see the job information is getting displayed this job is in running state when you click on that uh, job id it will uh, display you the uh, some more details so uh, the log information whatever you see over there the same information you can see over here in the cloud shell environment okay now coming to the uh, data proc environment just refresh the job this job is succeeded now go back to your bigquery environment and just see this table is created okay when you preview this table you can see the items data This is the data. So now let's examine our BigQuery table that we have already created for our demo purpose. Okay, now expand this data set. Now you can see 
customer table and sales table okay and also items table items table anyway it has been created to by spark job and now let's examine customer table okay this is a basic dimension table which has the customer information so there are few rows okay and uh, let's examine sales table this is a transaction table first level of transaction table that i would say so this has the information like uh, which customer bought uh, which item and uh, what is the quantity and what is the price and also what is the transaction date and all those details now we are going to create a second level of transaction table so we are going to create this table using a two dimension table and one transaction table so customer and items and also sales is a transaction table so now we are creating this table this table has been created if you preview this data now if we examine the data so now you can see customer name and item name instead of ids so this is the second level of transaction data now it's time to create the first aggregate uh, table so we are going to create a aggregate table based on the uh, item okay so we are uh, performing the sum of quantity and amount and then we are creating this table so okay so in the next step we are going to create the next uh, aggregate table basically we are creating this table based on the customer name that means uh, the sales aggregated at the customer level okay so now this table is getting created so it will take some time now this table is created if you preview the data one by one so now you can see the data so aggregated data okay this is first aggregated table okay at uh, item name aggregated sales at item name and the second aggregation table aggregated sales at the customer name examine the data lineage of this BigQuery tables okay so in usual scenario so the aggregate tables are the tables which will be made available to the end user analysis okay so that means uh, the customer aggregate sales or item aggregate sales these are the uh, final reporting layer tables which will be made available to a business users okay so for example let's say i'm a business uh, user now uh, I don't know all this process how these tables uh, got created so I have access to these two tables customer AGG sales and uh, item AGG sales and I've, I've given access to view the data lineage of these uh, tables okay uh, I will first click on this table okay so now you can see the all the details like if you want to preview the data you can preview the data so if you want to track the lineage of this table there is an option available you can see this option available within the BigQuery. Click on this lineage. Now you can see this graph is displayed. Okay. So usually data lineage uh, graph is displayed and uh, there are two options available. One is graph option and uh, the list option. So we usually prefer the graph uh, graphical representation of the data lineage okay now you know uh, you have access to this item aggregated sales if you want to know the source data of this table okay so you can check this graph now you can there is a node available that is bigquery uh, node so you can see this bigquery symbol logo okay so that means this table uh, got created using bigquery process okay so this has been created from this particular table okay and uh, if you would like to see how this table is created i mean it got created okay so you will have to click on this plus symbol further it will show you the it upstream tables okay now if you see this graph this is the basically downstream table final downstream table and uh, this is one level up table basically using this table you are creating this table and if you want to if you would like to know how this table got created so this table got created using these three tables okay sales customer and items okay so and you can see there is a plus symbol still available if you would like to see what is the upstream i mean how this table got created just click on this sales okay this sales it doesn't have any a further upstream uh, source available for it it is a native table of bigquery it is created within the bigquery okay and also customer so it's also a native bigquery table it doesn't have any upstream table if you click on this items table so further it is displayed some more information now you can see so this table got created using 
data proc process okay this is a data proc logo and uh, the, this table got created by reading data from gcs bucket okay and uh, then uh, we have created a bigquery table okay now you can see the full graph of the data lineage uh, as a end user you don't know the the basically uh, background process right how this table is created if you have to know this process this is a very good feature available to track the lineage of the data okay in the same way if, you are, if i would like to know the data lineage of the customer aggregate sales if i click on that table and go to the lineage same process actually so click on this plus symbol and uh, basically this node will represent the process of this table is created and uh, again using bigquery process by using these three tables this table has been created the same thing actually to know further upstreams click on the plus symbols this will again come to the same uh, basically information right so this is how you can track the lineage of the bigquery table so i have already told right so this feature is available okay for bigquery and also data proc and also data fusion and also what i say okay so you can go to the official documentation for more details i hope this will help you uh, that's it for the video thanks for watching